Okay, David Paul, back here. Uh, this is part two of the video. I'm out of the tent now. Uh, flip the camera around and let's have a look around. Let's have a really good look around because um, we got this issue going on at the minute. They're, they're talking about global warming and all sorts. Of, I'm a, um, a carbon dioxide denier. denier. I'll, I'll confess that from the start. Um, okay, so I'm, here I am in my location in Portugal, in Grusinas. Grusina, Grusinas, Grusinas. So, um, I'm out of the tent. There's the tent that I stay in at night. I have a similar one back in the UK. In fact, it's the same model, I think. And, uh, I stay in that in the UK and uh, this is the piece of land which is adjacent to my house and the guy lets me stay on it he doesn't give a toss um, but I've have said to him that I want to buy the land and my new lawyer because the present lawyer has just not doing any work he's um, so I'm firing him and moving on to this other lawyer she says that Portuguese people are very attached to the land, even if it's a little bit of land. So I may have difficulty purchasing this. If if that's the case, then to hell with it. I'll just not I'll stop not worry about it. Um, I have you put me in a trap and and say like you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do the other, and all I do is just an, I just like maneuver around and invent a new way out of the situation. And um, and just think in a different sort of way. So one of the ideas I have, which is to buy some land nearby, which I can use so that the the homestead becomes a um, a detached collection of uh, bits of land. If if it has to come to that, but actually it turns out that. For what I need, I do have enough land here. At the, up at the back there, this, my land is up there and round on the back of the house as well. Let's go around the back of the house. Okay, this is all heavily overgrown here and this is all mine. So I can clear this out. Now, one of the things about... Um, about growing vegetables and things, what you got to realise is that they don't actually care if the land is at a tilt. All they want is their food and water and everything. So, although to our eye this is this is not really very good land, it's about forty-five degrees in parts. There are terraces up the top there, um, and they're nice. Um, but uh, the vegetable doesn't care if it's grown on a 45 degree site so long as it gets its nutrients. So in my case, what I need to do is um, I need to... I'm having a wobbly time getting up here. I have an inclination to reach out and grab a branch, but it's a thorn, so I'll rip myself to bits if I do. It's the first time I've actually walked up to this site from this direction, a real struggle. I have to clear this so I can get up here easily. I might actually, I've got my leg trapped now. I'll have to um, start using this land. I feel if I'm using it, I will uh, be more inclined to look after it. Okay, there you go. This is mine. And, uh, try not to kill yourself, David Paul. And that there is the back of the house. So let's, let's venture on. So.
Okay, there we are at the back of the house again. Now, big hollow down there. Uh, somehow you could actually utilize that, I don't know. You can always turn things to your advantage. Lots of, oh, there's a, there's a, there's a pear tree full of pears. Before I, before I leave here, I might be able to eat those pears. God knows. Um, I'll try. <laughs> Usually they're just left year after year to rot. There's a lot of fruit in Portugal which just rots on the trees because you physically can't eat any more. You need about one tree of every different type of fruit and you just can't eat any more. It's just an amazing situation. Okay. So, all of this is mine. And bearing in mind, I've never had much of a, uh, you know, I've never owned much property. Um, you know, I have to say that this is quite a lot more than I've had before. And, uh, and instead of being rented or, you know, whatever, I own this, you know, and it's just a nice little start. So let's go up onto this terrace here, which... I also own, there's a big pile of crappy wood here, and this is pine, and this pine, this particular pine in Portugal, this stone pine, if you burn it on a fire, oh my god, it doesn't have smoke, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to burn it, but in rapidly, so it doesn't smoke uh, when I get my wood fired stove, so my first winter, this will be the this will be the first fuel of the winter. I'm going to get this cleared so that um, I can start to use this site because I have plans for this. Um, so basically all of, the, all of this patch around here is mine. And then from here, uh, we go to the side of the house Um, down here. Now, down there is an area there, which I've probably shown on video before, that's all grow overgrown there. And uh, just in front of that is where one would park a car, if you had one. And I'm looking at that situation next as well. So that's where I'll park my car. And that's all that will do. Just be a car park. But it, it seems to me that the thing to do with this is to, on top of the car, because of the level of the ground here, and because that I own that, and... Uh, I own that olive tree there, which is not important. So I can level this ground here, this patch of ground here. I can level it and possibly chop the olive tree down. I don't know. That's open to question. Uh, they're not precious olive trees. You can always plant another one or you can regrow them from the stump. But that is quite, quite overgrown. Um, it's not very practical and it's in the wrong place overshadowing the house and all sorts of things so I think this probably has to go but on this level area here what I can do with it is level it and if I were to build a deck which spanned out over the top of where the car would be parked what I would then be able to do is to walk out there onto that deck so why would that be good? Well, that would be basically a carport, but would be a carport with a solid roof. And you could walk on that top. So now what you've done is you've, you've lost the piece of land where you parked the car, so you couldn't sit there because you've got a car stuck in it. Uh, but all of a sudden you've just gained the same land back 
by creating a deck above it. Now, a car doesn't really have to be very high. A, a, a carport doesn't have to be very high either in order to shelter the car. So the deck doesn't have to be very high either. So that's, that's open to choice, or it can be very high, whatever you like. As long as it's strong enough to walk on, and there it is adjacent to the house. So you st there you are, standing on your deck, or sitting having a barbecue or whatever it is. And just there is a window uh, where you can hand food through the window and back and forwards uh, and interact with the inside of the house. Uh, so that's a little benefit there. Now at the back part here, uh, behind, immediately behind, um, there's a big rebar stuck in the ground here. I don't know what the purpose of that rebar is. I think that somebody's trying to mark out the extent of their land. I'm going to get a, su a surveyor from the council up here at some time later to actually uh, mark out the property and then we'll have it clear. So down here, this is void sort of area. And I was told, I'm not absolutely sure this is true, but I was told that there was probably some kind of latrine here in the past which could be reconstructed. I don't own the land, which is halfway. You take half of the width of the house, I own this part, and the little piece of land which is just over there, I don't own that, which is completely wacko. It's a really stupid situation. And... No matter what, I would really like to buy that piece because it's of no use to him, the guy who owns it. And it certainly would make my life a lot easier. And uh, it would bring all of this, all of this land here into use together as a, as a you know, as a integral piece, integrated piece. Okay. So it's going to be difficult for me to walk back down there Whilst holding the camera, it's difficult anyway without the camera work. So what I'm going to do is head out this way. And I can't remember if it's that level or that level. Now, there are terraces here. The two, there are two terraces, this large terrace here. And there's one up the top there. I own one of the two. And I think, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it's this terrace which is really quite substantial. Now, I've, I'm not going to mention this just yet, but I've got this very original method of constructing buildings um, using trees and stuff, and I want to try that out. So this, this is the location where I'm going to give that a go. Oh, and on top of that, uh, this new partner, she's got two boys. And if, uh, if this works out, they're going to get a dad and I'm going to get a couple of kids. Uh, and up there is a, uh, well, there are three pine trees, which I think they're all mine. And three pine trees is the magic number. Three, three trees is the magic number. Um, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to construct a tree house. I'm going to apply for permission to do that though because uh, it's going to stand out, so it's going to have to look good. Uh, I'll grow climbers and stuff over it so you so you won't see it, but initially while I'm building it, you will. So I better apply for permission for that. And they'll probably just laugh and just say, build it, you know. But I need that on a piece of paper saying yes it's okay to build it so i'm gonna because that is that is extra development what i'm doing in the house i'm not actually um i'm not actually going to do anything about the house i'm not doing any work at all uh, i'm not changing anything come up with a cunning plan which is to avoid all the rigmarole and and planning and applications for this that and the other and so on i'm just not going to change anything so you don't need permission to not do things you know uh, 
to do nothing. Doing nothing doesn't require permission. So if you look at the roof on this house, it's the old, what they call thigh tiles. It's baloney, but they used to say that they make them on your thigh. You don't. They were molded on a frame. But anyway, these tiles, I've got a friend who's donating 3,000 tiles to me, which were removed from his house when his house was done with the modern tiles. <coughs> In order to save time and cost and everything and just get the show moving, I'm going to just fix that roof. And, you know, if you look at it, there's not a lot needs doing to it. Um, I saw a picture of a church in Sicily, one of these things that pops up on uh, Microsoft Word. It says, do you like this image and so on? And this church had the old slates on the top that looked just like this. And I thought, man, it looks gorgeous, that. So basically, if I just clean that, Push everything back into place that should be in place. And anything that's looking a bit crappy like that chip tile over there, broken tiles, whatever, take them out and replace them with, in quotes, new tiles. You know, the, uh, the, the ones I've got look rather, look rather fresh and nice. Um, put, put them in, in place and just titivate it up and make it look better and leave it at that. No more. Now, the, the, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the roof when I go down into the house. Next. Very long video, this one, I think. Possibly, I don't know. So, anyway. Here I am on my terrace. And I'm now going to take a walk down here. And soon... One of the snags with these stone pines is they are quite flammable. They're nowhere near as bad as, um, they're native, and they're nowhere near as bad as the, uh, um, the eucalyptus trees. Eucalyptus trees are absolute sods. They're, they're, they're burning the country down, but they're grown for, uh, um, they grow them for paper pulp. And the country needs the money, so they're just going to suck it up for a while. But I have some ideas about what they could do about that, which is to start using it as timber. It's used as timber in Australia. And honestly, Portugal could supply the timber for the European Union. If they were to mill it and, uh, and treat it properly and dry it and season it and so on, they have this terrific resource because, they, you know, they have another resource, which is the cork pine. We're now off my land altogether, which is the cork oak. And, you know, you spend nine years growing that stuff and then uh, harvest it. I mean, it's minimal work, but it doesn't make a lot of money. And, as, you know, they could mix that in a bit with using the eucalyptus wood for a a more profitable profitable enterprise okay so we're walking down this path this path is a sort of access to the back of my property you can access the back of my property from here and now in future if it ever became possible though i doubt it i would really like to buy uh, this land, which is, in fact, I think that would do it for the projects I've got in mind. And it's horrible land. It's absolutely horrible land. It's 45 degrees. It's useless, but it faces south. And if you use it the right way, you could, you could get crops out of it. But that's not what I'm aiming to do. I have an idea for a... Um, uh, I have an idea for a, a sort of treehouse resort thing there, um, like a glamping site where people would come and stay in treehouses. And why this little path here is important is I could actually, oh boy, that would, that would take a bit of work, but 
I could use it as a sort of path for uh, vehicle access, although that's one hell of a steep climb. So there you go. Now, the, the path goes on up there in the forest. It's just pure forest. This is where I live. Forest, 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 forest. And in the middle, in this block here, this triangle here, this is native Portuguese forest. A wodge of ancient Portuguese kosher, the real tamale Portuguese forest. And around us, up on the hills there, on the ridge, and the ridge up there by, well, this is turning into quite a, it's a beautiful day, and uh, this is a really good time to be filming this. It's, it's, um, it's really showing this site to its best advantage. So up there on the ridge, that's all eucalyptus trees. Eucalyptus, eucalyptus, eucalyptus. There's a, an olive tree. <coughs> I'm hoping to grow my, well, to harvest my own olives and not get olive oil out of them. I want, what I want to do is I want to just, um, you know, pickle them in brine and, and then eat them. So I get to eat the olive oil, but I also eat the olive. <laughs> so I'm getting the olive oil. And I'm getting the olive, and I'm not doing any work. I just pickle them. And if I want some olive oil, I can buy it at the local store. The amount I use is minimal. Down there is that track again. And there's a vast forest down the bottom there, which is a continuation of this here, which is native Portuguese forest. It's, got, it's full of uh, cork, oak, and chestnut. And stuff like that. There's one tree which is absent round here, which is Prunus lusitanica, which is the uh, Portuguese laurel. And uh, I want to bring that back on my property because it's a very useful tree. It grows fairly fast. It, it looks beautiful. It's evergreen. It's got quite a tropical look. And it um, produces a really nice hard timber, which is a rival for the eucalyptus tree. And it doesn't burst into flames like those sods. <laughs> I try not to swear on my channel. When I got a job working in a Jewish school, they didn't like you swearing under any circumstances whatsoever. You know, like even like when the kids weren't around, they just didn't like you swearing. So I thought, well, that's good because I haven't sworn yet. And I, okay, I'll not swear. And uh, I never swore on my channel either, uh, yet, so I thought, I better not swear. So I'm not going to swear, but wow, man, is not nice? So if we could, as a community, start developing other things which have got nothing to do with eucalyptus, we could start to at least push the eucalyptus out of the region of our village because these trees uh, in the big fire I can't remember when it was uh, 2017 I think maybe I can't remember there was a massive outbreak of fires in Portugal there was a fire here and that whole hillside was alight not that that would be a problem to me because my house is stone, and it's actually quite a long way away. And if sparks flew over, it would just land on the house and go out. So this house has been here since 2000, no, 1937. Okay, so we've now gone full circle. And we're at the part which I've got to clear out. I've been dumping rubbish from out of the house here and there's a handsome wee um, area here for car parking 
and I could even dig out some more of that retained wall and make a decent place of it. And if you can imagine, you could have a, 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 a decking area here, a really huge decking area that you could sit out on. So, project for the future. Everything I do, I'm going to try and cover with beautiful foliage so it's not an eyesore for people. So I don't have somebody coming along and saying, oh, I don't like that. If they can't see it, then, you know, if it's just a big pile of bougainvillea flowers, then that's all it is, just a big pile of bougainvillea flowers. Not last year, I was here and I was chipping off the, the wall and um, when I arrived here I was kind of just dumped here by a friend who picked me up at the bar I went for a few beers and I made a, a very sentimental video about it which I then decided to delete and I didn't upload um, but fundamentally what I was saying is that this this house was built with a lot of love you know and if you look at the stonework here, um, it's very detailed. And this, the guys who built this thing, they cared about it. You know, they did put a lot of love into this. And I, I really don't like this business of putting rendering on stone because, um, well, Frank Lloyd Wright had this idea of, he called it honesty of materials. So if a, if a house was built of wood, you would see that it was made of wood. If it was made of stone, you'd see that it was made of stone. And, if, and even if it was made of concrete, you would see the concrete. And uh, you'd know that it was made of concrete as well. So the plan here is to get rid of all this overburden of hideous old rendering so I can see what's going on and if anything ever needs fixing I know it's there and I, I, I can just get at it <coughs> and I get the beauty of this stone which I like stone outside I'm not fond of stone on the inside but I'm learning to lo love it uh, and the reason I'll tell you in a minute but the side of the house is not an immediate priority though I do want to reveal these key stones here on the corners these corner stones because they're very attractive and dramatic but I am planning that what I will do on this side the other side and the back of the building is to grow climbing plants and underneath the climbing plants I'm going to put exterior cork wall insulation so if you can imagine the house is going to be wrapped in a, a a blanket of cork all the way around so all of the thermal mass of the building will be on the inside so any solar heat that it picks up will just stay inside it won't be able to get out and this wall is the feature wall where not so well insulated but during the daytime it gets baked by the sun so it will gain more heat than it ever loses and it also looks beautiful and it may actually gain enough heat in order to heat the house there will be some climbing bougainvillea up the front here but not covering everything but a lot of it I planted one last year in the hope of getting it going and what's happened is the guy came round and strimmed all the vegetation these fire people and uh, unfortunately chopped my view and really off but the thing is it's still alive and it's rooted and it's in there so that will come back and eventually I'll cover the whole wall with it okay let's go inside and see what we've been doing okay since I came back I've still got loads of this rubble to clear and uh, I haven't the energy for it so the idea now is I'm leaving this bottom part until this partner arrives and she can give me a hand by just feeding me while I do all the work, you know, because the, the cooking takes half of the day. Um, okay. So this will be bedrooms here. Uh, the 
The problem I had last year is I purchased three of these concrete beams. As you'll see, I've got these massive wooden beams, which I was considering taking out because this one's got quite a bit of rot at the end here. But I've explored that and it turns out that it's not that bad. It's only surface. I'll lose maybe an inch or two. But the thing is so monstrously strong uh, that um, it's, it's quite capable even what's left. And these beams, uh, they're good for another two to three hundred years. So forget about that. These beams contain notches. And the notches, uh, the notches housed beams which ran from that one to that one. If any of you are going to do up Portuguese houses, you'll find this as a common feature. They have the, like these main beams followed by joist type beams, followed by the planks which then go in the same direction of the main beams originally, which seems a bit odd. But I can see why they do it. It saves on wood and work. But if you think about it, what you're telling me is that it's quite adequate to go a bit, take a beam from there to there. And we're happy that that will not flex. We're so happy that it will not flex that we're going to now be able to put our Floorboards on that. That was the previous model. Okay. So you think you can do that? Yes, and you did. And that's how it was in the past. And that's how this house functioned. And that floor would have been solid. So if that be the case, if a man came along, me, and said, well, what about if I put another beam in between each of these beams that will double the amount of, well, it'll half the distance between the two, and it doesn't double the stiffness, it actually multiplies it by a factor of eight. It cubes it, squares it, squares it, squares it. Okay, so it's gonna, now going to be eight times as stiff, the whole, the whole enterprise. If it's now eight times as stiff, um, now I can lay my planks across. Well, I just thought it would, it would be... Um, it would just be stronger. I just felt last year that maybe I should do this. Now I'm having second doubts and I'm thinking, why did I go this far? So the, there is no question that this was strong enough as it was. So what I'm doing is only going to make it stronger, right? And on top of that, um, well, it, it's, it's just going to make it stronger. Because last year, I put these beams across and they were a bit springy. But if you look at them, they're not actually as thick as the holes where those joists were. So the stiffness that these had is not, last year, is not quite good enough. But if I was to use these types of planks as floor planking and put in an extra beam, then that would definitely be adequate because it would be like, as I say, eight times as stiff as it was. If these are okay, they're going to be eight times okay. So that was the, the, the rationale behind the three beams. So if push comes to shove, and I just can't, I can't get anywhere with this seeking wood. If I run into a brick wall sort of thing, it, it not being able to obtain wood. It will be adequate, it will be strong enough for me to purchase planks of wood like that and plank the whole lot. Now, what is that thickness? Well, it's actually a scaffolding plank. In fact, these boards were probably being made to be used as scaffolding planks at the sawmill. So I could buy wood of that thickness. Although that's not a, not what I'm intending to do. Uh, that's not the ideal. It's not ideally what I'm after. So anyway, I bought these joists. And uh, they weigh like a million ton. They are just so goddamned heavy. Oops, I've sworn. Uh, 
They're so heavy. You can barely lift them at one end and you can like shuffle them along and so on. And I have a friend in the village and he's as strong as a bull and the two of us can manage to lift it together. But it's, it's a dreadful job. And they're meant to stand, they're like a letter T in cross section. And the, if you can imagine the letter T standing opposite, uh, upside down. The idea is, is that in this key area here, you will have like cement blocks which go to the next thing. And you have loads of these things in the support, the cement blocks. So they're meant to be loaded such that this is at the top. Sorry, this, I'm not looking at the camera. This is at the top. And that's at the bottom because most of the reinforcing is there. So the tensile parts there and the compressive bits there. Um, that's that. So it's got to stand like this. So what happened is last year I didn't speak Portuguese. And my friend, who is just an amazing guy... Um, didn't know what a block and tackle was because I couldn't communicate to him. And in his garage is a block and tackle and he never gave me it because he didn't know what one was. And this year, eu falo um pouco de português. I speak a little bit of Portuguese and I'm, I'm managing to have conversations with this guy. It's a I tell you what, it just like opens up the whole friendship, you know. Um, and he just said, oh. And then he ran off to the garage and said, come, come with me. And we came back with a wheelbarrow with this thing in it. It's, it's a terrible thing, this block and tackle, because it's, it's so heavy to lift on your own. You need a block and tackle to lift the block and tackle. <coughs> but never mind. Maybe there is a, a tiny micro block and tackle for lifting blocks and tackles. Well, there it is. So what we did is uh, the two of us, we rigged up a beam, uh, which is this one over here, which is lying up against this wall. And we shuffled it up there and then we slowly jacked it up here and then we couldn't get it to fit because it's diagonally it's it's long and you've got to like yank it over and you've got to get it to fit precisely this these beams fit in here within half an inch of our measurements the the i bought them stock and they actually fit this room within half an inch so you have to knock the plaster off the wall in order to turn them around so that they stand straight i haven't put them straight yet but they will run straight across here and then once that's in, that's when things really kick off. Okay, so that's the beams. Uh, what comes next? So we put that up. And then he worked with me for almost a whole day getting the, the one beam up. I thought, Christ, man, you know, you've, this guy wouldn't give up. You know, he's an amazing friend. And... Uh, English people, my family said, oh, you should pay him some money or something, you know. And I did offer him, offer to pay him last night, and I thought, oh, my God, I'll not do that again. He, uh, he, he really seemed quite offended at the idea that I would give him money. So when I came back, I bought him a bottle of whiskey this, this trip. Uh, and he likes the whiskey, so I'll buy him more whiskey. That's the thing. Buy him beer. Buy him beer and whiskey. So he said he was going to come back today and give me a hand taking off the the stuff off the wall. I, I can't have him doing this. He, I mean, it's my project, and I, I create hell for me, and I have to put up with it, but, like, I don't expect other people to get in on my project. So anyway, this beam, this next beam, is the one I did myself. And what I did is I put the... Um, the rope in the centre, roped it up to a cross bar across these beams here, and I roped it up into position, then turned it, got one piece up there, then lowered it down. Then I went over to this side, 
One of the problems is uh, the block and the thick, the height of the block and tackle and everything. If you're hanging something from here, you're not actually at your destination. You're hanging somewhere around here with your block, and you need to be further up. So, yes, when I did it with this friend, what we did is we chalked it up on a load of blocks and whatnot, and that's a bit dodgy because it can slip. I thought, sorry, I don't want to do that, man. You know, this is just getting dicey. Uh, and this is the worst job in the entire house because once these beams are in, I don't have to lift anything heavier than this. So I said, to hell with it. I'm going to attach it to the roof rafter. And I'll bet you it doesn't pull the roof in or anything like that. I'll bet you nothing happens. And if it does, I'll hear it going. And if I hear it going, I'll stop. And then what I'll do is I'll um, I'll stop and I'll find a different method. And then the damage I've done, I'll fix it. And then it'll display the fact that the roof was weak in the first place. So I do need to do that. So it's kind of a test for the roof. So what I did is I got a, I got a stone and a piece of string and I threw the stone... And I threw the stone, and I threw the stone, and I threw the stone. And finally, I got it over in that triangle there. Over there. And I pulled the rope up, and I multiple looped it around, and I made that loop thing there. Consequently, I now have something to attach the block and tackle to, which is higher than the destination point, the top of there, that we want to pull up to. So sure enough, I connect the thing up. Connect it up down here, remote the block and tackle to its full extent, connect it to the beam, and start lifting. <laughs> up it goes. And I hear this like rattling sort of creaking noise, and it wasn't it wasn't the roof what it was, it was the chain dangling on this door here. The door here, I put it as a sort of insurance policy because if it slipped, it would jam on that. So this old door, it was creaking against the door and making rattling sounds, and it wasn't actually creaking, it was just the rattling of the chain on there, so, so, okay, carry on, carry on, there's the string that I fired over the top, carry on, carry on, and I cranked it up, and cranked it up, and cranked it up, and then eventually levered it sideways, uh, I, how did I lever it side? I think I just pushed it, pushed it sideways, landed it, and there we are, so today's project is to get, if, if I do this, this will be fine. If I get that beam over there, and this beam belongs over there, across there. These boards have to be lifted up so it can go underneath. Um, and then the third beam comes up in the middle and resides pretty much where this beam is, except it will then be turned to become straight and run to here. And that's that. That's it. And there's a, there's a full load down of the, the site, the work I'm doing, the everything. Uh, and as I say, I'm not changing anything. And then I'm getting the least amount of trouble. So there's the roof with all the missing tiles. I'm just going to slide them back into place and put the new ones in. Now, the reason why the floor is important, because if I can get this floor in and I can get some rubbishy old wood flooring in, it doesn't matter what it is, even if it sticks from the forest or anything, something I can walk on, then I have a, a not a great height between here and the top of the roof to go. I'll be able to get a step ladder. Or hire some uh, small amount of scaffolding. And I'm going to climb up on the inside of the house. I'm not going outside. And I'm going to repair that roof from the interior. So that involves the least amount of physical risk of falling at all. And even if I fell, I'm only going to fall like a few feet down to there. But I'm not going to fall because, as I say... I'll have um, I'll have the scaffolding which I'll be standing on. 
and it won't take a long time it shouldn't take a long time to fix those tiles there's no roof coming off there's no wood beams to be put in and taken out and lots to be nailed on if you follow the portugal project and his roof work he's had a lot of work to do because he's had to renew the entire roof i'm not doing that and that just that that like that's like a quantum leap in my work in moving forward next year the project is to get the the windows in and start tidying the place up in terms of decor the top part there i will put cork board insulation in on temporary lats which will seal the top off uh whilst i you know stay warm and uh that will give me the whole top of the house which is then functional to live in while i work on it um the doors there will be a, a win a huge window there and there will be a um a door there and i'm not going to use upvc plastic windows or nothing like that i'm going to use the traditional steel portuguese windows um, which i've been thinking through when i go to the philippines my brother-in-law has got a um an arc welding kit and i'm going to learn how to arc weld a couple of bits of steel together and once i've learned that i need to be able to I, all i need to do is to be able to, to weld one inch of steel so stay on track for one inch and then i can make the window frames for here the reason why i like the steel as well is it's very low profile so you don't use lose any window space it's very stiff for its size and that's it and i'll put steel in there steel in there and steel in there and the front door will be steel as well and i'll also put a wood door which goes over the steel for when you're not in residence for extra security and that's it and in the in the roof eventually sometime in the distant future i'll put some skylights in there why not look at the beautiful portuguese land well wow, this video is now 47 minutes long but it's saves me having to make loads and loads of videos so i guess i gotta do it if you look at the indie projects and theo who plastered a wall uh let's talk about the walls and because somebody doing up a house this might be important to you the indie projects what he did theo is he went and he looked at all these little stones and he was into this so what he did is he cleared it out his his stonework wasn't as good as mine the the mortar in mine is like original to the day it went in but his place it was all crumbling out so i guess it saved him having to clear it out so he just brushed it all out and so on <coughs> and what he did is he took all of the little stones and he pointed round all of them now my original intention was to plaster everything in the santa fe style so that it would look like the house had been made out of uh, adobe or something uh, mud and i've changed my mind on that because i think it's oh i don't know i can i can feel the ghosts of portuguese guys gone by looking at their work and thinking god he's just plastered over my masterpiece you know a sod like you know and um and i thought i wanted to do justice to what i said before which is the love that went into constructing this thing because the people who built it probably lived in it so they they did care about it and they got people together who cared about them and cared about making a good home for them and as i said previously in another video a guy came along patted his part of the wall and said bon, bon construction good good construction you know which it is this is one hell of a house it's strong and a lot of big stones as well so theo what he did is he 
rendered every he put the he he, um, he uh, pointed everything carefully uh, in great detail and probably quite artistically round every single stone every single little stone um, but the way I see it is I'm not going to quite do it that way I'm going to do it a bit more in the conventional way uh, and I'm going to make, a, a, make an issue of the bigger stones so if you look here I'm going to show you something there's rendering there, there, sorry not rendering there's, there's pointing this is a mixture of clear and lime, which they've used at the time. Uh, there are stones in here. That's possibly one of them. I don't know. There, are, no, that's a structural one. There are stones in here, which are in the wall, which contribute. There's a one there, a really good example. They contribute nothing to the structure of the wall because. Nothing is, you can see this there, there's nothing, load has not been taken by that stone, it's been taken by this mortar, uh, but it's just basically a surface mounted stone and it's not taken any down load from the wall. And the reason I can prove that is, I've just chosen a rotten example because it's, it, that must have a wedge on it. Okay, that is wedged in. Okay, let's pick another one. There's one there. Is this a structural part of the wall? That's another one. Right up. See if we can find one. Now, I'm having difficulty with this. I don't want to rive the whole wall apart in the process of just proving a point. Okay, there's one. There's a stone which isn't providing structure. It's just sitting there. So whether that stone was in there or not in, in there is irrelevant. So the ones that are not doing anything, I'm going to take out and remove. If I throw that on the floor, I've just done a, nearly 100 years of history in. There goes 100 years of history. Um, all the ones that are not providing structural support, I'll pick them off. Okay, some of these are solid. This one here, this one here was just shoved in. There's, there's the good example of what I'm talking about. Okay, it's not providing any structure. Take it out. I'll leave it there. I'll consider putting it back in with the render, we'll see. With the, um, not render, with the uh, mortar. But... Theo, as I say, he pointed everything and uh, and brought out the detail of every single stone. I'd have to see that to see what it looked like for myself up close. But as I say, I'm just going to... I'm going to do the big render idea, and he's the reason why. Um, there's an architectural digest out this month, and I saw it in Queenborough, and I had a flick through it. And damn it, I wish I'd bought the thing, you know, because like, I lost the shop. I could not find, I could not find that shop. Uh, searched everywhere. Um, but what they had, they had built a house which used substantial amounts of mud, which I was experimenting with last year. And it doesn't work with this Portuguese mud. But the, it was kind of an adobe sort of place. And it had really rich orange colours. <laughs> so my idea is is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to render it not render it, I keep using that word I'm going to point it with sand and cement uh, sand and cement mortar I'm going to use high quality sand for the mortar so it produces a nice um a nice smooth finish that you could on, you know, if you're not looking carefully, kid yourself it was actually mud, you know, but it's not. And I'm going to add a, a dye, 
which is iron oxide, which you buy at the builder's merchant. And I'm going to create that orangey looking render, uh, not render, um, orangey looking water, which I will then put in here. So I'm going to have all of these earthy tones in here without actually using earth. So I'll have all the earthy colours without earth. And it should look sensational. I've got a lot of light coming in from that window there. So that should be bright enough. None of it will be going upstairs because there'll be a floor here. Um, and these are bedrooms, so they don't have to be that bright. And I will, um, on this wall here, which will be here, it'll probably be white, that one. And that will provide some reflected light. And it shouldn't be too bad. And also this room will be slightly smaller because I'm hoping, I think, to put a bathroom here, possibly. Yes, I think it will be here because I don't want to take anything away from upstairs. I want that massive room. The room upstairs is just going to be one single living room, dining room, kitchen, everything room. Nothing to do. Nothing to do here. You know, nothing to do here. Move along literally in time, get, get on to the next job. And that's it. Oh, I thought of a good joke for here. This is a piece of the hillside which juts into this room. Now, it doesn't matter. The, the, the cows and things that used to live in here didn't, didn't care, I guess. And um, that there is a piece of the bedrock that the house stands on. It's very solid. This place is going nowhere. It doesn't need foundations. It's got a mountain. Um, but I thought of a good joke I, I'm going to chisel some of that away and create a bit more space I don't need all that there uh, if I put a stove up the top I'll leave some as a support for the compressive support for the stove uh, I don't know yet I haven't yet worked out where I want to put the, the wood fired stove but the the customary place is usually in a corner like that on a piece of rock which has been retained for the purpose but we'll see um anyway this rock on there i'm going to put some pretty letters I'm going to paint the word portugal on there because that's the joke you know because this is the house made out of stones and things like that but this is actually actually portugal this is Portugal. This is the country of Portugal. So I have a piece of Portugal sticking in my in my room. I might even have this room for me because I kind of like the joke. Portugal. I'll start a trend. Everybody will be painting Portugal on bits of rock that stick into the house. Then there'll be like phony sticking a bit of rock in so that they can paint Portugal on it, you know. And people discovering the phonies and saying, ah, that's not a real piece of Portugal. So there you go. One last look outside. And then I've got to quit and do some actual work. Okay, so there, as you walk out of the house, there's that view again. Forest. Forest, forest, forest. Forest. People are now starting to appreciate my point of view in the village. They thought I was crazy, and now they're starting to think, mm, actually, um, that's not a bad place to live. It's quite beautiful. <laughs> and why not? And at the front here, there's this stuff here, which doesn't belong to me, but uh, it's a sort of cultivation area interspersed with bits of native trees uh, no eucalyptus trees in this part and uh, it's just cultivated land which is good because it keeps down the uh, the rubbish wood uh, which can catch fire and this has all been nicely strimmed and at the very bottom there with about at least 10 times as much water as last year at least 10 times is a lavada, which is like a stream which uh, are constructed in Portugal to run 
ziggy zaggy around all the terrain in order to conserve water and keep it on the move and keep it on the use for everybody. And there you go. One last look at the house. My temporary doors. And that's it. So that is a big one for now. And uh, I'll put some more updates in on how things are going later on. So Jesus be with you.